very much, Mr. Speaker. As the Secretary of State, I know, is aware, there have today been severe disruptions on the railway line between Doncaster and London, um, owing to a power failure, um, which has presented <laughs> my right honourable friend um, for Don Valley from being here. She does send her apologies to the House, Mr. Speaker. Can I thank the Secretary of State for early notice of his statement today and congratulate him? for making it back, looking slightly less damp and dishevelled than he did earlier from Hinckley this morning. At the outset, let me be clear that we support new nuclear power in Britain as part of a balanced, diverse and lower carbon energy mix. Of course, Mr Speaker, we will look in detail at the agreement and the, those aspects of the agreement yet to be concluded uh, today. But in principle, we believe that nuclear power is safe, contributes to our energy security reduces our carbon emissions and makes us less vulnerable to the vagaries of wholesale gas prices. Today I want to ask the Secretary of State about three aspects of his statement. First, let me start with a very important aspect of value for money. The Secretary of State has announced a strike price of £92.50, of which £3 will be shared as first-of-a-kind costs with Sizewell C, should that development could go, go ahead. Could he explain to the House how this figure was arrived at and why he believes it represents good value for money for consumers? Can he also confirm that any change to an investment contract will be published and that any change which results in an increase in cost to consumers in the view of the panel of independent experts will be classed as a varied investment contract and therefore laid before Parliament for debate? EDF have also said that their £16 billion budget included a contingency fund if that fund is not used, or if costs underrun, what mechanism will there be to ensure that the co compensation goes to consumers rather than to the general treasury pot? Yeah, yeah. Second, let me turn to the impact of the announcement on our environment, on the local community and for the economy. The Secretary of State will be aware that the Energy Act 2008, passed by the last Labour government, means that before consent for new nuclear stations are granted, the Government has to be satisfied that effective arrangements exist or will exist to manage and dispose of the waste they will produce. In January, while Copeland and Allerdale Borough Councils were in favour, Cumbria County Council voted to withdraw from the process to find a host community for an underground radioactive waste disposal facility. I understand that his department has now started a new consultation exercise to find a host site. Therefore, could the Secretary of State tell the House if he is satisfied that the arrangements to manage and dispose of the waste that is produced at Hinkley Point C are in place? There is also agreement across the House that communities that host nationally significant infrastructure should be compensated. In July, the Government announced a package of community benefits. However, these only come into enforce when the plant is operational and not during the construction phase when disruption is likely to be greatest. What consideration has the Secretary of State therefore given to the Select Committee's recommendation, which I know is shared by Sedgemoor Borough Council, to extend community benefit to the construction period? The Secretary of State also mentioned the wider economic benefits of the investment. We share his desire that today's announcement will help create a strong British supply chain and secure high-skilled engineering construction and operating jobs. Last week, the Government signed a Memorandum of Understanding allowing Chinese companies to take a minority stake in nuclear developments in Britain. Given the nuclear expertise that exists in this country, can the Secretary of State tell the House what provisions were made to allow British firms to advise and to be involved in nuclear build in China? Third, we hope that today's announcement is the first in a series of nuclear projects in Britain. So let me finish on the lessons of these negotiations and today's agreement. Today's announcement is subject to EU state aid approval. So can he tell the House whether he has received any indication from the Commission about whether approval is likely to be granted and in what time scale? <clears throat> For other potential nuclear sites, can he tell us what the Government is doing to ensure these are developed? Does the Secretary of State also accept that this agreement today shows that long-term certainty is what really matters to unlock the investments we need, not allowing overcharging to continue now? While I note the Government says you can't freeze electricity prices for 20 months, he has just set them for 35 years for companies producing <laughs> nuclear power. So does he therefore further accept that when on 24th of September he said our 20-month price freeze proposal would put investment in doubt, today's announcement shows him to have been completely wrong. Finally, coming on the same day as Empower became the third big energy company to announce another price rise, and in light of the potential costs of this agreement, does the Secretary of State now accept that it is all the more crucial 
we reform the retail energy market so it is clear, fair and transparent and consumers can have confidence that prices, as well as investments, provide value for what is, after all, their money.